Righto, and welcome to our third episode of Taskmaster. My name is Jeremy Wells, and if you ask about me at that little smoky, out-of-the-way Danny Virk pub, they'll tell you what you need to know about me, and that is that I am the Taskmaster. <laughs> Five comedians have signed the necessary release forms to allow them to put their bodies, their minds, and other parts of themselves through a series of character-defining challenges that we call tasks, all in the hope of going home with my golden skull in its trophy form. That's right. Those dedicated few from whom we will draw our delight are, as always, Chris Parker. Josh Thompson, yeah. Justine Smith, yeah. Kuna Forrester, yeah. and Paul Ego. Yeah. And at my side is a young whippersnapper hungry to make a name for himself. Don't let those puppy dog eyes fool you. He <laughs> will stop at nothing to get to the top. It's Paul Williams. Well, as always, due to budget constraints, we ask our contestants to bring in their own prizes to play for. <laughs> what have we got this week? This week's prize task is their most prized childhood possession. And the winner of tonight's episode will take home everyone's most prized childhood possessions, like a primary school bully who is <laughs> merely acting out because of their own issues at home. <laughs> Let's start with Chris. All right, as a child, I had glue ear, completely lost the ability to speak, and then there was just so happened to be this woman, and she was doing a PhD in how to teach kids with glue ear how to speak again. She taught me how to speak, and she got to do her PhD, and I guess passed, or maybe she didn't, and then as a way to say thank you, she gave me a little tin car. And so here's the tin car. Oh, I know, fantastic. it's sincere. It looks like it's made in the 40s, it was made in the 90s. Sincere. From my perspective, what's happening here is we've gone Christchurch upbringing, tick. Blonde hair, tick. Hitler youth outfit, tick. <laughs> 1930s German car, <laughs> tick. You could interpret a very beautiful story about my little Helen Keller journey of being able to hear for the first time and twist it in some sort of Nazi nightmare. <laughs> it's a beautiful story. Kuta, what did you bring in? Well, I searched high and low and said, Mum, do I have any childhood possessions? And I couldn't believe it. She gave me a whole bag of all of my old school reports. Ooh. They're really prized possessions because it turns out I've been a legend for a long time. <laughs> yeah, I've got them here to read. Kuna needs to put more effort into her work. Her behaviour is inconsistent and can be inappropriate at times. <laughs> Finally, someone said it. I like the fact that you went to a school where the behaviour standards are of a high standard, appropriate, inappropriate at times, or of concern. Yeah. It's also amazing yeah. she didn't tick inappropriate at times, considering yeah. she literally <laughs> yeah, <laughs> used those exact words. Are you going to say her works from the Hitler youth? <laughs> or just my childhood? Just yours. Oh, man. <laughs> Josh, what did you bring in? I, I grew up in the uh, South Island on a farm, so naturally I spent a lot of time running around paddocks dressed as a ninja. This classic ninja get up there, of course ninjas need weapons, so I made a, a little wooden ninja star. It doesn't throw very well, so then I made one out of nails. <laughs> um, and that was awesome, I'm not going to lie. And then sort of topped the whole thing off with a sort of replica submachine gun. Um, yeah, so um, wow. just a chilled out uh, childhood there. Yeah, that's how I uh, would roll around. <laughs> So there was a reasonably and, uh, large ninja community inside Timaru? Ah, oh, it's a pretty secret society, mate. I can't really talk about it. <laughs> Excellent. Justine. So for my um, childhood memory, I'm also from Christchurch, but less kind of... Um, I'm not uh, a Nazi. OK, OK. <laughs> just, just calm down, Chris. <laughs> calm what down. What have you started? Please calm down. Um, when I was younger, my granddad played a banjo as part of a comedy duo. <gasps> this is his joke book, which is a really precious thing to have, but also... <laughs> <laughs> um, Why do you say that? Well, you know, it was of a time, Jeremy. Uh, Granted, was a comedian in the 50s and 60s, and, you know, things were a little bit different. <laughs> <laughs> and I also brought a photo of my beautiful granddad uh, playing... Wow. 
Uh, well, what did you bring in? Okay, well, the thing I treasure the most, I brought with me. So, this is my mum. Uh, there she is there. Hi, Marge. So, she's still around. She's 87. I wanted to bring her in in person, but her knees are quite bad, and she literally would not have been able to get up over that step. I know the feeling. And, uh, yeah, she's my most treasured thing, because she's awesome. Uh, Thank you, guys. It's not her. I just Googled a picture of an old lady, but... Um, <laughs> no, it is her. It is her, yeah. Okay, so whoever wins the episode tonight yeah. takes home your mum. You're willing oh, to that'd give her Oh, that'd be away? awesome. <laughs> that'd be... Like, if we could arrange that, that'd be really great. Because, <laughs> like, her retirement village is really expensive. <laughs> I would say just do keep that away from Josh, because he will kick it in half. Yeah. <laughs> Can I just explain for the audience, in a previous episode, I kicked a woman in half. And, you know, like, geez, you do it once and, like, you keep going on about it. Like, let's move it on. Well, it's hard not to give you five points for bringing your mum. Five points for you, Paul. Thank there. you. Well done. Thank you very much. I love the story about the banjo lady. That's four points for you, you Justine. Kurt, I'll give you three. That's a middling score for a middling report, it turns out. Thank you. And I'm only going to give you two points, Josh. And then, unfortunately, I have no more of this Nazi shit. <laughs> All right. It's a tin car from the 90s. <laughs> Calm down. Aww. That means, incredibly, there are only four points separating first and last place. Fascinating. Fascinating. Should we have our first task, then? Sure thing, Jeremy Wells. If you're a fan of household chores or the TV show Taskmaster, you'll love this next one. <laughs> Is that you, Paul? Yes. <laughs> Always be ready, you know? What a time to be alive. 508. What? Oh, oh, that's the time to be alive. <laughs> oh. You've set up a washing line? Well, this looks a bit houseworky, doesn't it? This is an icon from my past. My brother and I used to hang upside down on these by our legs and spin each other around and hit our heads on the concrete under the line. Did you fall off a lot? No, he fell off a lot, though. He's, he hasn't been the same since. <laughs> but it was funny. Ay, ay, ay. Run a full marathon fast as once. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> hang the washing out to dry. You have two minutes to hang your washing, following which Paul will spin the washing line once. Most remaining hung items wins. <laughs> your time starts now. Are there any pegs? Are there any pegs? Where's the pigs? Ah! There! <laughs> the hell's in there? Oh, God! Is this the washing? <laughs> the hell's this? Bananas? It's the washing. It's silly, is what this is. <laughs> it is a silly task. What was inside of the washing basket? There was a total of 462 things. <laughs> Gummy snakes, bananas, uh, CDs, some pens, cans of beans, a, a jacket, if you can believe it. OK. <laughs> Let's not leave them to hang out to dry any longer. Who are we seeing first? Here's everybody but Chris. <laughs> Do these all count as individual items? Yes. OK. Terrible. Ugh. Who's with these tiny bras? <laughs> Sexy bra? Well, <laughs> clearly not mine. <laughs> gotta hang them to this. Gotta hang them to this. <laughs> 90 seconds. <laughs> Not a lot of time, mate, to do a successful load of washing. A xylophone! <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Is that a banana in your pocket? Yes. Oh, OK, I thought so. <laughs> sad, sad 41-year-old man trying to hang up a sour worm. Hands off, please. Hands away. It's not sour. It's just gummy. Oh, I am under time pressure, Paul. I haven't got time to properly identify lollies. Well, the sour ones normally have sugar on the outside. I, think I know about the sour ones, Paul. There's only one sour worm here, and that's Jay Thompson. You happy with that? <laughs> I hate that question. Ugh. Um, yep. Preparing for the spin. Just go soft. Just go soft. Don't be a D about it. Oh, that's too hard, isn't it? <laughs> oh. Go. Stay in. Only one snake out. Ooh, 
This man knows how to hang up bananas, my friend. Are bananas counted individually? It'll be up to the taskmaster. They should be. It's five bananas, yo. But they're all connected. Yeah, but aren't we all? Aren't we all in this crazy world? <laughs> what the heck? What was going on with that spin? I was pretty consistent with the spin, but the, the, the things hanging, like, they really swung a lot. <laughs> Who's with the bras? I'm not sure who the bras were. I just found a lot of stuff honest, around the house. Yeah. Whose bras were they? Yeah, Paul, you slut. <laughs> <laughs> you can say they're yours. Honestly, bras. Honestly, like, who, whose bras were they? I, I can't. I don't know whose they tell were. Tell us. I don't know. We can tell when you're lying. <laughs> yeah. Stop hiding your erection with the iPad. <laughs> From where I'm sitting, he could have done it with an iPhone, but... <laughs> so, Justine, uh, 11. Kura, 11. Josh, 17. Paul, 28. Wow! wow. Nice! You're amazed. I am amazed because I'd forgotten that I'd actually stuffed a whole lot of extra stuff into the pockets of yes. the jacket. Yeah, wow. the pockets I were I thought huge. I'd just put the bananas in, but no, I'm amazing. <laughs> Right, we've got one more contestant, though, don't we? Yes. Chris Parker is his name. To hang things is his aim. He has other, like, larger life goals as well. <laughs> yeah. But I couldn't fit them in the poem. It's Chris Parker. I've got two minutes. One minute and 40 seconds. Oh, my gosh. Oh, nice. Oh. <laughs> Chris. 30 seconds. Oh, it's a bit. Really? You ready for the spin? Yeah, hell yeah. Spin, spin, spin. Well, there's one thing you can say about the Nazis, their technology was good. <laughs> <laughs> this whole episode's gonna be cut. <laughs> I'll just be blurred out. Centrifugal force, obviously, you understand that as well. You've gone with the basket on the inside. That was smart. Didn't think of that. <laughs> but sure, yeah. I mean, I played the um, centrifugal at high school. <laughs> is that what you call it? <laughs> <laughs> so what are the scores in the end, Paul? Well, Kuda and Justine both got 11. So they can get two points each? Yes! Two points each for Justine and Kuda. Yeah. Three points for Josh, four points for Paul, and five points for Chris. Yeah. Woo! What lucky up? task have you got next for us, Paul? I personally think we should flag this one because it blows in the wind. <laughs> oh, I know what these are. Hula hoops. Hula hoops, exactly. Ooh, that was very Olympics or something. Commonwealth Games. Oh, it's not <laughs> All the information you need is in the past. Oh, I think I'm gonna have to warm up. Got some cards there? Yep. Pick a card from Paul's deck and build a big flag of the country written on your card. Best big flag wins. You have 30 minutes, your time starts now. Did you say deck? Yeah. <laughs> I have not been this excited about flags since the jonky referendum with the laser kiwi in the eyes. Do you remember that? I do, I do. Oh, that was good. That was a good one. We're looking for the, the best big flag here, aren't we? Yes, yes. So big and good. <laughs> That's what best means. Yes. Yeah. Flying the flag for New Zealand, it's Josh Thompson. UAE. Is it the correct flag for the United Arab Emirates? I don't know if I've lost my mind. It looks like the Stars and Stripes, but it's... Can I look at the other cards? Doesn't say that I can't. Okay. I could overpower you. Okay. Uruguay. So the... Oh, it's a trick! <gasps> okay. Of the country written on your card, can you, can you Google a UAE flag? <laughs> mm, Paul, can you please grab all the red books? I've read all of these. You know, no. Okay. Ow! Thanks, Paul. Great. Oh, actually, we don't need those. Why? I just thought it'd be a mean thing to say. Oh. Just kidding. That's, you've done great work. Okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Sorry. Sorry. There's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. Damn it! 
Come on. Come on. Yes. Oh, worth it. These cucumbers will help. Yep. Yep. Shit, yeah. I'm feeling these cucumbers. These might be Lebanese cucumbers, too. Oh, if I say that part of the UAE, that's racist problem. I, I don't even. Oh, my geography's very poor. I mean, that's pretty bloody good, mate. Up there, it's got to look bloody good. I wouldn't be surprised if some citizens of the UAE just came in and just were, oh, we better roll it up. And I'd be like, oh, sorry, that's a bunch of stuff. It's not a real flag. Here it is. The United Arab Emirates. Says flag. UAE! 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 Whoops, what the hell is that? It's the goddamn Burj Khalifa on the flag. The male rocks. It, it's the Burj it's the world's tallest building. Do you think the people of the United Arab Emirates? What's that? Do you think the people of the United Arab Emirates? What's that, mate? Do you think the people of the United Arab Emirates are gonna like your flag? I think so. It's the Burj Khalifa. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah. I think nothing quite says Dubai like a folded wheelchair, an upright letterbox, and half a dozen cumbers. <laughs> That's right, yeah. And there's no reason why I can't use a wheelchair to make a flag. It's very ableist of you to say that I shouldn't use one. Um, sitting on there on your mighty red throne with no wheels, you piece of shit. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, but you're a great guy. You're a great guy. You're a wonderful man. Wonderful man. I don't know what's more disrespectful. What you guys did to the flag or the fact that you can't say United Arab Emirates. I can say it now. Say, say, it. It. say it. United Arab Emirates. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> did I notice a sneaky little trick in there somewhere, Paul? Uh, well, there was a mix-up at the printing place. And, um, yeah, so basically, the flag pictured on Josh's card was USA, but the word written on his card was UAE. Oh, I'm getting angry. And the task uh, very clearly did say to make the flag that was written on the card. Oh, mm. fuck. <laughs> the it's actually it's mean. really mean. It's mean. like <laughs> balls. <laughs> <laughs> the air in the studio has suddenly gone quite stale. <laughs> Perhaps it's best we rip the band-aid off Paul and see who's next. These guys really know their flags. It's Chris, Paul, Justine and Kura. <laughs> Brazil. Mexico. Uruguay. I got Jamaica. Jamaica me crazy, you know what I mean, Paul? I don't understand. Okay. Honestly, we have lied out. I don't know why I went in there. There's really nothing in there. Okay, I'm gonna go in there again, just see if there's anything else. I want it to be massive. Let's do Brazil proud. And I just don't know if this is gonna be very big, is the only thing. Have you ever been to Uruguay? No, never. I'm not, I'm not even sure where it is. It's right next to Argentina. Oh yeah, I thought so, because I was gonna say this is quite a similar flag to Argentina. Christ. I hope I'm making them proud, at least. Do you have a favourite flag? Do you want to guess? It's got many colours. Pride flag. No. South Africa. Why would you think pride? Because it's got many colours. Australia. Oh, because oh, I'm gay. No. <laughs> you jerk. I think that's a good Jamaican flag. Yeah, I think it would be recognisable to anyone who knew their flags. <laughs> you see that? Mexican flag flying up there. You go, whoa, time for some lasagna. Isn't that Italian? Oh, it is now, but didn't used to be. Do you think the people of Uruguay will be happy with this? Yeah, I reckon they'll be like, cheer bolt. Do you think they say cheer bolt in Uruguay? Uh huh. Have you made many flags before? Yup. A certain rainbow flag. Australia. The pride flag, Paul. Oh. If there's any Mexican people in the surrounding area, they're going to get quite emotional. If any Jamaican people watch this, what do you hope they feel when they see I it? I hope they feel a surge of national pride <laughs> in their beautiful flag in their wonderful country. 38 seconds. 38 seconds, OK. A couple more bits of red. Last two red things I've got. A couple of crocs. Done. Mexican flag. <laughs> It's meant to rain later. 
My name's Justine Smith, and I've I've just made I'm not drunk. I've just made a flag of Jamaica. Look. Hi, I'm Kura, and this is my flag of Uruguay. You're a great guy. Hi, I'm Paul Ego, and this is my flag from the country of Mexico. Mi nombre es Chris Parker, y hice a bandera do Brasil. Sorry, I tried. I think the coolest thing was making everybody say their name with their flag. That was not very yeah. nice. Yeah. I think I insisted on mine. <laughs> I'm just ashamed. I realised when I got home that night after that task. How, how did, did you? you? How did yeah, you realise? I've, well, I've got a, um, an atlas in my bathroom with all the world flags. Oh. And I'm like, fuck! <laughs> 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 I just love the amount of confidence that you guys were going into that with. That was yeah. the remarkable thing. Do you know, it wasn't confidence, it was trust. And yeah. you, guys, true. Yeah. True. you guys That's just true. shat yeah. all over that. Yeah. yeah. I've used that printing guy before and he makes a lot of mistakes. <laughs> I don't want to score that absolute abomination, but I suppose we have to. <laughs> so the, in terms of flag size, Josh's was also the biggest. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yes, his was uh, over... 3.4 metres long. Here we go. Oh, there's Josh's. So this one's meant to be on the top there, and that's what it is underneath. So Josh's is pretty much spot on. Mine's so close, though, eh? Mine's pretty close. Mine's yeah. just got one missing thing. Uh... Mine's really wrong. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Chris... There's no excuses for mine. I really fucked it up. Chris made the Solomon Islands flag. Justine made the uh, Tanzanian flag. Yep. Uh, Kura, Argentina, and Paul, of course, Italy. God, I, part of me knew it was Italy. <laughs> <laughs> I actually made a joke about lasagna while I was doing it. <laughs> I think at the end, Josh, if we score it, he's got to get five points, right? Okay. That's only fair. Well done, mate. Ordinarily, I would say that everybody else gets zero because you didn't achieve the, complete the task properly. However, there's some quite impressive craft that's gone onto this. Yes. And so I think everybody else should get two points. Oh. Yes, thank, thank you, you Tasmania. Thank, thank, thank you. Where does that leave the standings for this episode, Paul? <laughs> Currently out in first place with 11 points, Paul Ego. Woo! <laughs> what are we doing next, Paul Williams? <laughs> Boo. Oh. <laughs> Sorry for giving you a fright. Here's a task to calm your nerves. Greetings, P. Willie. It's bright and it's hot. And I'm not just talking about your lovely face. Just in here, is it? Yes, please. Okay. I'm not going to get punched by anything coming out of there, am I? No. Okay. Ah! <laughs> ah! Oh! <laughs> oh my god, that's actually scared me. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Fo! Fo. I have never opened a mailbox properly, and finally it has paid off. Scared to look. Do something that will frighten the taskmaster. Best fright wins. You have 30 minutes. Your time starts now. Jeremy. Yes, please. 30 minutes to fright the taskmaster. Fuck you! <laughs> That's just in there in case the other one's not better. Sorry to swear at you. I mean, you probably shouldn't. It might ruin the fright if you like part of it. How come? Oh, you'd kind of know what's happening. Me? Yeah. Oh, front the taskmaster. Master, mask, ma what? Ba ask. The taskmaster. Do something to frighten the taskmaster. You're not the taskmaster. You silly Billy. Oh, I never said I was. Oh, why did I frighten you? I'm not sure. It gave me a real fright. Oh, no. I've done it again. I've done it again. I don't want to seem overly brave because I'm not a particularly brave person, but judging by how you guys have been going so far on this particular episode, <laughs> I have no concern here. <laughs> at all. No, you could have worn your white pants today, you'd be fine. <laughs> I mean, you guys were freaked out by those rubber snakes that were inside <laughs> yeah. of the... Yeah, but one of them wasn't rubber, do you remember? Yes. There was, an, there was one actual snake in there. It was a, a full-size king snake in yeah. there. Mm. King snake? Yeah, yeah. It killed three of the crew. <laughs> <laughs> Did that not happen on your... Must have hushed it up. <laughs> we did try and get those prank snakes that jump out at you. We couldn't find any, so we were really disappointed to get the plastic ones because we were like, no one will get scared by these. <laughs> <laughs> 
And it turns out everyone will get scared <laughs> by those. You're just constantly on edge, though. It's like normally a letterbox full of rubber snakes wouldn't worry me. On Taskmaster, it absolutely scared the shit out of Especially me. Especially with you floating around like a little quiet, creepy ventriloquist puppet. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's haunting. You put, us, you put us all on edge. Whose fearful torment do I have to put up with first, Paul? First up, it's Josh Thompson. How do I frighten him? I could call him as the Department of Police, or whatever they're called. The police. That's the one. I don't pack to this in. This is Jeremy Wells. Sorry I can't come to the phone right now, but please let me name the number after the beep. Hi, Jeremy. It's Brian from the IRD. Um, we've just got a lot of problems with your tax space financials. Oh, I panicked there. You were doing uh, the tax thing and then you kind of went to touching his bum. Yes, double prong. One tax, then he's like, uh oh, and then like, in there. Okay. You could follow it up. I wouldn't be expecting that. Please leave your name and number after the beat. Oh, you're at your window now, looking out, and you know I'm in the bush and I'm walking around. God, sniff, sniff, sniff. I'm coming for your daddy. I'm coming for your daddy. I'm coming for your daddy, and I'm gonna come for you. in the dark. <laughs> okay, but he wouldn't be expecting a third. Yeah, good day, mate. Oh, we've just gone over your contract and we're thinking about terminating it so you won't be able to have a job anymore. This will affect you financially for a while. <laughs> yeah, mate, well, uh, me and the guys at the ACC have been talking. We just don't think your, your, your contributions are not really very good. So any self-confidence you might have should be less. Uh, I should have just run him over or something. Hi, Jeremy. It's John. <laughs> He probably will get a fright when he sees he's missed lots of calls. That's right, from the same number. Oh, then he'll know they're the same person. People share phones, though. So you're saying the IRD guy, Jeremy's boss, one yeah. of his cricket commentary colleagues, some guy in a bush, they're all sharing a phone? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I need to read this, because I need to get the quote exactly right. I'm coming for your daddy. I'm coming for you, Daddy, and I'm gonna come real nice <laughs> in the dark. Feels nice, eh? <laughs> <laughs> see, my mind has got a lot of different sort of uh, Josh's just sort of running around. No, I can see that. Trying to, trying see to figure that. out what to do. And, and I quote um... again, I'm coming for you, Daddy. <laughs> I'm coming for you, Daddy, and I'm gonna come real nice in the dark. I mean, it could mean a, a, a number of things. And if you're listening to it now and you're disturbed, then it's having the correct effect. So, you're welcome. Well, the wound of fear is already open. Who's sliding a blade into it next, Paul? <laughs> Our next contestant's hair is red, one of the scariest colours. And her eyes are black, just the middle bit. Which <laughs> is quite common, but still. It's the very scary Justine Smith. Paul, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. You want me to leave? Well, I suppose so. What's the issue? If you see me setting stuff up, then it's just going to be stupid. Me? Yeah. OK. <laughs> I think I'm going to go and look in the shed. Should I come? Uh, yeah, you can come. OK. It's lovely out here, isn't it? Yeah. Like a nice place, you know, if you were going to pick somewhere to die. It'd be quite nice out here. Are you going to kill me in this forest? Justine? Come on, Paul. Turn around. You've got 20 minutes and 14 seconds. Yes, have you. I'll wax my eyebrows. Oh, oh. So, if you'd like to turn around and walk up the hill, please. Well, I'm going to stop you now. OK. And take off your blindfold. <laughs> OK. <laughs> you frightened? Yeah. OK. Thank you. I'm going to have a cup of tea, Paul. Do you think anyone's going to beat that? No. <laughs> oh, Jimmy! Oh, you've seen what's happened there, haven't you? Yeah, I have totally seen what's happened there, Jeremy. It's just that I didn't think you deserved to be frightened, and I thought that I, I'd just use, you know, your sidekick. I can't fuck that up so bad. <laughs> I frightened Paul I was you. incredibly frightened and on multiple levels because I was scared of obviously dying, but also she 
taped up my eyebrows. I was scared of losing those. There's no doubt that what Justine did to you is absolutely terrifying. It's just the wrong person. Correct. I feel sorry for myself in a lot of ways because I am the taskmaster and I feel sorry for the show. I, I really feel for the TVNZ marketing department <laughs> who have spent tens of thousands of dollars promoting the show to the outside world that I am the taskmaster and this is the taskmaster and that you haven't understood that as a contestant <laughs> on the show. <laughs> I've got to be honest, you have scared me. Okay. Oh, oh that's good. There you go. Okay. But not on purpose, but you have scared me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Paul, refresh us on where we are. Our contestants are attempting to give you the biggest fright. Josh left you some voice messages and Justine tried to kill me with a medieval sword. <laughs> Who's next, Paul? I actually have a question. If it was nighttime and you were alone, could a forest uh, make you feel quite scared? <laughs> yes. Hey. Cool, so who's up next? <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you freaked? It was quite scary. Yes. There was a Barocca in the mouth, wasn't it? Yeah, it was really, that's why it was hard to speak. I don't know if you've ever just chucked a Barocca in, <laughs> but boy, it's hard to talk, when, especially when there's a strobe and you've got two eyes. Do you not usually have two eyes? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Paul. <laughs> who's up next? It's Chris Parker. Do we tell him I've died? Like, do we get someone from production to call him and say Chris has had an accident? Um, we need someone to call Jeremy and say Chris has fallen from the roof. Doing a task. Doing a task. What was the task? It was um, get the closest to the sun. You've got 20 minutes, your time starts now. And Chris got on the roof of the Taskmaster house and he fell off. He's in hospital. We had to get him chop it out of here. Is he going to be OK? See, this is working, yeah. It's not looking good. He's got two impalements. He's concussed. He broke his ankle. He's got like a weird STI, but I don't think that was from the fall. I think he just had that. That just came up in the doctor's report. And then maybe you could get on the phone and be like, bro, this is crazy. I saw it happen. And did you hear? He's also got crabs. They're starting to say it was from the accident, but I don't, I don't believe them. What do you think? It sounds pretty scary. I think I've pushed it a little bit into a comedy territory. Um, what the hell is that noise? There's someone coming in. Should we stop? Is this the owner of the house? Or something? I don't know. Ooh, what is this? Stop, stop, please. Fuck it! Oh my god, what the f? What the f? Oh my god! Paul! Paul! Oh my god! What the f is going on? What the f? What the f? Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god, Paul! Chris. Paul! I don't... Yeah, he, no, he's gone. It's... Yeah, someone just took him. No, it's not part of it. Stop filming. Stop filming, please. Those guys seriously fucked me up. So you were abducted? Yeah. And I assume TVNZ paid the ransom? They did, yeah. 20 bucks? <laughs> <laughs> I think most people would be like, oh... Man, that's scary. Like, it could happen to anyone. <laughs> right, well, we've got one more scaremonger amongst us, haven't we, Paul? Yes. It's New Zealand's tallest man, Paul Ego. <laughs> Hi. I'm Mikey Havoc of Mikey Havoc fame. And I'm here to talk to the Taskmaster. We used to work together doing Havoc and Newsboy. Those were good days, sexy days. <laughs> Often I would undress in front of him and sit provocatively on a chair like this one. That's a lot wider than I thought. 
and I would remove my clothing. And he would say, no, Mr. Havoc, I cannot fight your sexiness. And I said, I am the taskmaster today. You do what I say. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, taskmaster. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Just cut it there, probably. How did you know Mikey did that to me? <laughs> I just had a sense, you know, and I didn't feel comfortable replaying it, but I knew that it would bring back even harder memories for you. The past for many of us is a dark, dark place, and for mm. me, there is no exception there. Mm. Horrific. <laughs> I really regret doing that. And, um, <laughs> What about when you taped two bottles of sauce to your tits? <laughs> oh, no, that was a hoot compared to that one. <laughs> <laughs> right, now I need to decide uh, who frightened me the most. Paul, I'm going to give you five points here. Thank that you. that brought back something from my Thank past, you. which is quite scary. Justine, I'll give you four points because you scared me not knowing what was going on there. <laughs> Could a great use of a Barocca. Three points for you. Thank you. Two points for you, Chris. And uh. one point for Josh, because I'm never going to pick up those messages. Uh. Just, just, just close your eyes. Just close your eyes. I'm coming for you, Daddy. <laughs> I'm going to come real good in the night. Do you need to borrow Paul's iPad? <laughs> So let's slide up into the mechanical gears of this Wonka factory and retrieve the scores, please, Paul. <laughs> With a whopping 16 points, the leader is Paul Ego. Yeah! Wow. Nice. Wow. Right, we're heading for a grandstand finish. Let's head up to the stairs for the final live task. <laughs> Jeez, you look good standing behind that array of things. What's happening now? We're about to do a live task. Chris, could you please do the honours? Choose your item. We're going to start with Kuda and move along one at a time to Paul. I would like this handbag, please. Ladylike. Oh. Chris Parker. <laughs> I'd like this pumpkin, please. Yes. Josh Thompson. Sh should I do the walk you're doing yeah. backstage, Chris? Justine Smith. Frisbee. Oh. I'm gonna light a fire. Oh no. Sweep your item towards the drop. You have one sweep. If your item drops, you will be eliminated. The item swept closest to the edge without dropping wins. Yeah, no, oh. this is alright actually. No. That's great. We're going to sweep from behind the red line. Cross the line as sweep. you... No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's... That's fucked. Oh. We're going to go one at a time. I'll do it with this one. And we're going to start with Paul Ego. Go, Paul! Go, Paul! Whoa! Whoa! Justine. Going for you. Oh, <laughs> Sorry, mate. You can do it, Go, mate. Go, Whoa! Hey, good sound. Good. It's incredibly close between those two. Weirdly, this isn't the first time I've done this. <laughs> Sweet that pump pump it. Oh, oh. Hey. Ooh. Go, Ko. <laughs> Got him on some points, though. Well, that was absolutely sensational. Come on down. Welcome back. Oh, Paul, who swept the field away and won that one? So, Kuda finished third with 138.2 centimetres, and in first place by 8 millimetres, only 51.8 centimetres away from the edge of the stage, Paul Ego. Wow. wow. Well done. 
where does that leave the overall standings? Still out in first place with 54 points is Josh Thompson. Wow, wow. But, Paul Williams, tonight's winner is who? A dominant performance with 21 points, Paul Ego. <laughs> Paul Ego, it brings me great shame in saying this, but get up there and get stuck into your own mother. <laughs> oh my God. I told her to watch this episode. <laughs> up you go. But I totally will. <laughs> Woo! Oh, it's been a good night. We've been reminded that there was a time when rotary clotheslines reigned supreme. And we've seen that there's nothing more terrifying than a woman trying to kill someone when she doesn't know who that someone is. <laughs> Most importantly, we've seen that the winner of this third episode of Taskmaster is Paul Ego! <laughs> we'll see you next week. Paul Mario. <laughs> <laughs> For more Taskmaster, subscribe now! <laughs>